All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to Stumbling Forward. Today, our special guest is Sarah Dandeshi. She is an award-winning concierge and travel expert. In 2015, she won Best Young Concierge in the World, making her the Miss Universe equivalent of concierge. She has produced over 200 travel videos covering all the best there is to eat, see, and do in Los Angeles and around the world. Sarah has appeared on The Kelly Clarkson Show and is a regular contributor on Good Day LA. She also consults and trains various companies Companies on enhancing their hospitality and service standards. Hey, Sarah, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Kristen and I are super excited. So tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, all that good stuff. Um, well, I mean, you did a great job with reading my my um, little bio there. I have to also, <laughs> I think you've probably been the best person to ever read that bio. I was like, she gets, she gets the, the commas and all that stuff. I'm like, <laughs> You know, she understands. Um, whoa, what, what, um, let's talk about myself. So, uh, <laughs> I it's am. It's so hard to do. <laughs> it's so hard to do. Um, oh, oh, I have a quarantine helicopter flying above my head. So please forgive that. That's, that's okay. That's where we are in life. Um, so uh, about myself, I am a, a hotel concierge. I've actually worked in, in hotels for over 18 years and I've been a concierge for 15 years. Um, I have an online brand called Ask a Concierge and so I do travel videos. I also work with a lot of different hospitality and just travel brands in general. And uh, you, you know, that's that's kind of like what I do now. I, I have a really unusual upbringing. I'm half Lebanese, so I grew up kind of that. all over. Yeah, so I was born in Pennsylvania, but I lived in Saudi Arabia as a kid, London, England, Atlanta, Georgia. And then I went to college in DC at Georgetown, lived in New York, and now I've been in LA for 15 years. So um, I definitely have a, I, I, mean, I mean, it's my background, so I'm like, it's normal to me, but it's definitely an <laughs> unusual background. And um, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of like a little snapshot as far as as, as my background is. So moving around that much, was it just like, it took you there in like your job, like the concierge part of you just had to keep traveling or do you want it to live in those places? No, no, no. So that was as a kid. I did that. Okay. Okay. So Got yeah, it. I lived okay. all there as a kid. No, I've lived in LA for 15 years. So okay. my adult life ish. Awesome. Ish. Um, yeah. So no, no, the traveling, I had no choice. I just had to do whatever my parents told me to do. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, I was, my mom had me in the States, but, uh, she got, as soon as my passport came in the mail, which I think it took like three weeks. So I was three weeks old and went on my first flight to Saudi Arabia and then like lived in Saudi Arabia until I was six. Oh so I pretty gosh. much grew up there. And then, um, and then my parents got divorced Then we, we moved to London and then Atlanta, um, from about like eight to 18 in, in Atlanta. So wow, that was kind of like what all the travel was. And because I am half Lebanese and it, I do have a lot of family that like on my dad's side, they live in the Middle East and they live in Europe. So it's, if one wants to see your family, that is where you go. So, so travel's always kind of been a part of your life then. Yeah. And yeah. I, I do, I joke around where I say travel is like part of my DNA but I'm like, it kind of is because it's like it's happened. It's just been so much a part of my life that I just always kind of grew up with that sort of worldview. For for me, it's was always the bigger picture as far as um, you know, just kind of you know, just having a, a smaller outlook. I just had to have a bigger outlook. So how did Ask a Concierge come about from you working in the hotels? I mean, obviously there's the concierge part, but like when did you decide to create your own thing? Yeah, so, um, well, another aspect that I didn't necessarily talk about, um, but I know that you might know, Monica. So I have a background um, in film and TV. So I've done uh, a lot of acting, comedy, even stand-up comedy, sketch comedy. And so, I, and I've also written a, a couple of things. And so I was actually taking a writing course. So that basically the hotel job was like the day job while I was pursuing like acting and producing. And so uh, I was doing a writing course and the instructor was like, everybody has to do a vlog. And I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, I'm like, okay, a vlog really. And he's like, yeah, yeah, do a vlog on what you're an expert on. And I'm like, Oh, I'm not an expert on anything. I mean, I like to eat healthy and work out, but I'm like, I'm not a guru and I definitely don't have a six pack. So that ain't <laughs> happening. Um, and then I was like, well, I guess I'll, 
whatever. I guess I'll talk about the stuff that I talk about on a regular basis at the hotel. Like I'll talk about things to do in LA. I don't know who's going to want to like listen to that, but whatever, it's an assignment. I'll do it. And I did the first video, which by the way, still exists on the internet, which is kind of embarrassing. I'm looking for that. <laughs> Mine too, yeah. but now I'm going to go look at yours. <laughs> yeah, I, have look scarf. At all. <laughs> I have a scarf, but I'm like, doing it from like my, my bedroom in my old apartment. And I'm just like, well, welcome to, <laughs> but I'm like so stiff. Um, and, but the cool thing was, is okay, fine. I did it. And when I showed it in class, everybody was like, wow, this is really great. This is interesting. And I'm like, nice. You live in LA. Why do you care about things to do as a tourist here? And they're like, well, well, we're always looking up for things to do, whether it's for a date night or whether we have family in town or all of the stuff. And it was like this light bulb moment that, oh, wow, this idea isn't just, just for people coming to LA. I could actually give information to people in LA. So it started from that. And then, you know, I, I committed, I mean, obviously my background was always in, in video and I'm like, nobody else is doing it. So I'm just going to do it. And, um, and not only that, but that's also my passion and my background. So that's where I started doing the videos. And I certainly focused more locally, uh, you know, on things to do in and around LA, just because it was easy. We couldn't start. I, I didn't have like deep pockets to start flying around the world with a camera person at the beginning, but I just really focused on what I could do in and around the area to just really keep costs minimal um, as I built the brand. And then just with time, then I would travel and I would record while I was traveling. And then we would put that together. And next thing you know, just brands would notice. And, and then I wasn't just covering Los Angeles, but it was really just covering travel destinations in and around the world. And then always trying to weave in like kind of like the hotel experience, just because that is so much of my background. I forgot how similar our stories are. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I was just right? thinking Crazy. that. I was like, I'm like, oh yeah, because it's amazing actually how much there is to do in LA. And I lived there for mm. five years and I feel like I didn't get like anything done. You know, I, I, yeah. cause you get wrapped up in work and you get wrapped up in like other things you have to do. So yeah, having ideas like, oh yeah, you should go do this or go hike this or whatever. It's yeah. Yeah. really beneficial. Have a resource. Exactly. Think about it. <laughs> I think that's such a good point too, that people kind of miss when they're starting a business or they are looking for something to do with their life. Like what comes natural and what are yeah. you an expert? Like that's such a great mm -hmm. basic question that you don't really think about like, how can I do this for fun? <laughs> so. yeah. well, well, and it's, it's two parts to that. So it's like, it, it's also the other part of it is that it's also so hard for people to give value to what they know. Like mm -hmm. in my mind, I, I was like, well, yeah, I can talk to you all day about like what to do and like where to eat, but like who wants this information? And so you, because it's like so close to you, you mm -hmm. don't necessarily understand the full value of it. And that's like what you can be an expert in is sometimes right there in front of you. And yeah. You just need somebody to, in essence, hold up a mirror to be like, yo, that's actually like useful and interesting. And you need to like share yeah. that. Oh, that's exactly. such a great point. And having someone be that mirror as well in your life can be yeah. like, like, you're good at this, you know, like I can see it, do yeah. it, <laughs> you know? Exactly. And, and that's the whole thing is, is that so many of us, we have that in us. It just takes finding just like the right moment and to really kind of tapping into it. And then it's like, oh, I can like make this something. And also just being not afraid to just try and figure yeah. it out as you go along too, you know? I mean, you can have a game plan, but be prepared to like move from that, that game plan. Yeah. Awesome. So what's like, what's your big goal? Cause I know that you have your toes in a lot of different things. And I know that like looking you up concierge is the first thing that pops up, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like you have so many different talents. What's, what's yeah. your main thing? Uh, you know, for, for me, um, def I mean, it doesn't make sense for me to, in the long term to stay at a concierge desk as I do, uh, just as a, just purely from a business standpoint, I just make more working outside of the hotel than working at the hotel. So that's just, and that, by the way, that's what a great position to be in. You know, we all have a side hustle and then it's like at some point when the side hustle starts, um, surpassing the amount of income it can generate for you than, than your regular job. You're like, Whoa, okay. So then like mm -hmm. the tables turn. Um, but you know, big picture, uh, big goals. It's, 
multifaceted, certainly. Uh, there's definitely like a, a TV show element that um, is part of it. It's only part of it. It's definitely not the only aspect, but, um, but absolutely that and certainly from the hotel angle. And uh, I have always wanted to do a book. So I definitely anticipate to have a couple books come out as soon as I just want, I want it to be a the right time and then the right topic. That's just where it just makes sense. I don't want to force it just to like say I wrote a book. I'm like, yeah, we'll get there when we get there, we'll, you know, when it makes sense. So would it be like things to do in places or would it be like something completely different? Probably not that because I feel like that would just change so much, Yeah, you know, and I'm like, Oh God, to me, just all, as soon as you mentioned that, I'm like, how many revisions of that would? <laughs> yeah, and it's like the two the the 2000 like 21 version and the two that and I'm like, now nah, we're good. Yeah. Um, Honestly, an autobiography sounds like it'd be amazing because right? of, like all your travel and stuff. I mean, for I me, mean, from you mentioning all those places, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I mean, I guess, girl. but then again, it's one of those things. It's like when it's uh, I'm like people don't want to know about my life. Like that's the, but um, I don't know. I've, I've even batted around a couple of different ideas, like um, even like life lessons from the concierge desk, because I love like, that. you that's work nice. with so many people and yeah. so many people from different socioeconomic backgrounds. And so it's like, how are you dealing with those people that have private jets to then you have to go and you're talking to the dishwasher like in the back of the kitchen like you're there dealing with everybody of all different backgrounds and mm -hmm. navigating that and as people share things and you know we they, we joke around in the concierge profession that being a concierge you also have to be a therapist which is true because so many people come to you they're like and it doesn't necessarily have to be a travel thing I mean there's that, but they're just some people, they become regulars. And then next thing you know, they're telling you about Mary and then how her divorce to Joe and then this, and you're like, <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> it's a lot. That sounds super fascinating. That does sound fascinating. Does it? Okay. It's kind of like a bartender, but better. Yeah. Like, like it's tell so me about funny. Your so I was originally a, a bartender. Oh, really? And so, and I always joke around that I was like, uh, I'm like, my bartending skills, like as far as like the people skills really let it self nicely to being a concierge yeah, yeah. but then I also joke around um, if I ever happen to be working on a weekend night and somebody stumbles to my desk drunk at like 10 p.m and they're like talking to me and I'm like oh no 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 bartending days are over I don't <laughs> <laughs> drunks we good we bye <laughs> that's so funny yeah you can't do that when you're a bartender because they're like give me another and you're like oh, I don't want to yeah, like, I know I, can't do I it. know I, know. I well, can't what are they for, if they're drunk and it's like 10 or 10 30 at night on a friday whatever they're asking me for is probably not good <laughs> not leaving. so i'm like i don't want to be like yeah i'm like i gotta go to the bathroom i'll be back yeah you just like, keep, i want a, I want a tiger <laughs> yeah don't don't make eye contact that's the trick no eye contact which is by the way like <laughs> complete antithesis to hospitality <laughs> where they're always like make eye contact if they're 10 feet away no. say something if they're six feet away and then i'm like nope nope <laughs> all right so what advice would you have for somebody that's like starting out doesn't really know kind of what direction to go in get started that sort well, of well well it's so funny because like i know that you would like ask me that and it's like you're you like what advice would you have for them if they wanted to do what you did and i was like or, or like, however you would. And I was like, don't do what I do. The whole point is, and not to say, the whole point is to say, do you. Is yeah. what I'm trying yeah. to say. Um, but, but I mean, it, you know, it's sort of tricky. It's like, I, I kind of, it's, I find it a little bit of a tricky answer or a tricky, a tricky question to answer just because I feel like, I mean, there isn't, there isn't people, nobody's really doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, as far as in this hotel space and then changing it into also like a, um, a content creator space in, in the travel industry. But what one can take from it is whatever industry you work in and whatever you're trying to do is to just really look at yourself and be like, okay, well, like what, and examine, like, what am I an expert in? What can I talk about? Like, what do I talk about on a regular basis? And when you sit down and you, almost like how people do food diaries, like do almost like work diaries and figure out like, what are things that people are commonly coming to you and asking you for your opinion on or your advice on? And that's a good way to help narrow down 
really like what people see you as. And, and if that is something that you're actually kind of passionate about, if it's something that, you know, you can see doing more with it, I would absolutely say explore, explore bringing that, bring it online. Because quite frankly, having a personal brand and bringing whatever your passion is online is going to open doors in a, in a far different way than doing any sort of traditional, um, like a work, like any tr sort of traditional work environment, you know? And it's like, we're living in such an age where because of social media and because of this, it has even the playing field in so many ways. And so it's like to just get out there and share your stuff and, and then find your way. That's great advice. That's great advice. Is it good great. advice? I don't yeah. know. Okay. <laughs> no, it's definitely good advice because it's like one of those things we have to think, okay, well, what do you find that you get lost in? That's what I always try to like remind myself. I'm like, mm -hmm. are you getting lost in it? Because that's probably something that you're really passionate about that you yes. love talking about and that you like. So that's, it's great advice. It, yeah. it, it is. And it's interesting because, you know, some people have even asked me like recently, they're like, oh, are you so upset that you're not traveling? And I'm like, I mean, I'm like, I'll travel at some point, but it's, I, what I've, I've always wanted to do is actually really like study more trends and statistics. And because for me, it's like, I'm just so fascinated by people and understanding the decisions that people make. And so now, because I'm not running around the world doing this, that, whatever, I'm actually able to kind of do a deeper dive into that. And then I launched a series just a couple of weeks ago where I, I share these travel industry updates. And, you know, my whole goal with that is it is this like doom and gloom time for the industry. But I'm like, well, wait a second. Like at the end of the day, at, like it's going to bounce back. So mm -hmm. how can we look at it in like a numbers and figures sort of way to mm -hmm. really understand where the strengths are, understand where the weaknesses are so that we can constructively move forward. So yeah. I don't know, but, but, and that's, I see, I just got lost in like me talking about that. And I don't, I'm that's apparently a statistics nerd, whatever. That's great. You're, uh, great you're discovering that. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Monica's <laughs> looking at me like, I think I need a drink when you're talking about all these numbers. No, no, no. It's yeah. fascinating to me. And it is funny how like in this time, we kind of have the time to slow down and yeah. see what we're really passionate about. Like for me, it was actually bringing the comedy back in. I was like, man, I missed this. Like, okay, how can I incorporate that on the other side? You know, yeah. so super fascinating. But all right. So what mistakes have you made or would you tell people not to make? <laughs> if you haven't made them, that's great. But like what pitfalls do you oh, see? Oh, I mean, uh, that is tricky as far as mistakes. I mean, hmm, I mean, one of the things is like, definitely, I, I don't want to say it's a, a mistake, but maybe just like sitting on an idea too long and just, you know, we, we all do this. It's like, I don't know, should I, should I just do it? You know, there are things in my life where I've just done it. And then there are some other things in my life where I just like sat on it a little too long. So I would just say, you know, to, to really take those chances and, and, and don't sit on ideas too long and let them really come to life. Um, but if, as far as a mistake, oh gosh, that's so... Uh, you don't you know, make mistakes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm perfect. <laughs> I'm it ain't perfect. It ain't perfect. I'll tell Never you. Never perfect. It's definitely not perfect. But um, you, you know, oh, you know, that's what it was. Um, a lot of times, like for me, I just, and I think it's part of my personality. And then my personality compounded with the fact that I've worked in the service industry. So that just like makes me like wanting to put others ahead of me so much more intense. So mm. I'm always looking to put others, you know, like cater to other people's needs at, at my detriment. Mm. It's like, oh, you need to have like a phone conversation for two hours. I have so much work to do. I'll just do this conversation because this is what you need. But then in the flip side, then it's like, I'm up till two in the morning finishing what I should have done or whatever. That's like a really weird example. But I think actually that's a very uh, pandemic appropriate example, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, so, I mean, it's really, you know, being mindful of like, be really honest with yourself as far as what you need mm -hmm. and don't, don't worry about being selfish, like be selfish and put those, 
needs ahead of others because once you take care of yourself, you're going to be able to give back tenfold. So as opposed to if you go the other way around, I feel like you almost, you're always in a rat race. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. I do yeah, want you to write a book. I'm like, yeah, tell me more. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like, it could literally be about your thoughts. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, just publish your I journal. Love, I love perfect. <laughs> perfect. Well, no, they, this is actually great. I love that. Like I'm able to share because these quite frankly are thoughts that I have. And I'm like, are people going to think I'm weird? They're going to like, they're no. like, uh, uh-uh, stay in your lane concierge girl. But it's, you know, yeah, it's thinking no. about it and you're always seeing people. So, and it's um, universal to any business and anyone that has goals, which is kind of our point is we want to just have advice for people that have no idea how to start or maybe are in the beginning and they're lost. So. And even it's, it even just, it's having that encouragement to start, start, definitely start. I had yeah. no idea what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I was like, I, I'm just going to put it on Twitter. And that was also the other thing when it comes to social media. I mean, I think this is a really huge thing because I know, um, for, you know, for those of us that are on it, it's like, whatever, we live, eat and breathe and do it. But for people that are starting out, they find it a bit intimidating. They're like, what am I going to say? What content am I going to create? What happens if I don't get enough likes or enough views or enough, whatever, whatever platform. And really at the end of the day, you know, what I always say to people is like, just start. Well, first, first of all, when you get on a new platform, watch for a while, see what else is working. So you just get the lay of the land. So you, you educate yourself and then just start and don't worry because we live in such a world and a society where like in 24 hours, like they're not going to remember who you are unless you did something awful or like, like racist or said something completely terrible, people aren't going to remember you. So like, which is a weird example that I even said that, but (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, unless yeah. you're, if, if you're just trying stuff like, okay, fine. Maybe you don't get enough likes, big deal. Next time you do something else, or maybe you discover that like you do get a lot of likes. Like I was always doing like at the beginning, I never showed my face. So at the beginning I always took pic because I didn't want people to think that it was like about me or, or, or that. And so I'd share pictures of food or landscapes, whatever. And then I would start to throw myself in and then I got more engagement and I'm like, Oh, people, people do want more of me. Okay. And so, and then I, I I was then got into like, okay, well, how much is enough that I want to share? And so for example, even on like Instagram, I try to do it that it's like every other image is me. So it's not Mm. all me um, because I don't want it to be like necessarily every photo, but And by the way, there's nothing wrong with it being every photo. It was just for me, that was just a choice I kind of like, like as far as like aesthetically. Um, And like, okay, so I was concierge girl sharing all of this information and advice, whatever. And then I was doing a photo shoot and I started dancing in front of a wall. My friend caught a video of it. So I just slapped some music on it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is such an embarrassing video. I'm dancing in front of a wall. I'm just going to share it whatever. I'm feeling a little feisty. Let's just share it. So I share it. And the response was overwhelmingly positive. And in my mind, I was like, wait, I don't get it. I'm concierge girl. I'm travel girl. They want to see dance videos. What? So it was, but because again, when you're creating a brand and yes, you're part of it, it's not necessarily in my case, it wasn't necessarily just the travel. It wasn't necessarily just the food or the hotels. They wanted my personality too. And if my personality includes me dancing in front of a wall, they're like, give me more of it. So again, it was a case of just like trying it and it's like, okay, cool. So then we add more of those. So the whole point is like when it comes to social media and I think starting your own business, just get out of your own way and try and don't worry about mistakes Mm -hmm. because I know when you said that and I kind of like stopped because I'm like, eh, I don't really look at things as mistakes. Do things not work out? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> but there may be been better decisions. Yeah. But like as a mistake, I'm like, yeah, it was a, it was a lesson. All you made a good point on personal branding as well, because if they like you, they'll follow you wherever you go. So if you stop being a concierge and become an author, yeah. They'll follow you because they like you. So. Well, for sure, for sure. And I mean, I know, I, and I'm sure that you can attest to this as well too, just because I know that we've been on the platform 
forums online for as long as we have been, but I, I'll never forget Instagram stories changed the game for me mm-hmm. in the sense that, um, get, and I'll never forget this because somebody who I respect and they are a really respected individual in the hospitality industry said to me, he was like, yeah, I stumbled across your Instagram and you know, you caught my eye. Cause it's like, you know, you seem, you're definitely intelligent. You're articulate. You know, you've got a good look. You share these really polished videos. He's like, then I started watching your stories. He was like, damn girl, you're really weird. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, but I kind of like it. And he's like, all of a sudden it gave you your personality so much more dimension. Mm -hmm. And it really stuck with me because I'm like this guy who is like a respected professional, like actually gets some sort of amusement out of my Instagram stories. And again, it is just, it goes back to the whole idea of personal branding Mm -hmm. and that people want to see that. Now, of course, you know, you keep in mind as far as like the content and what you do, I don't share everything but it's but you can have fun and people want to see you having fun so when are we joining tiktok Uh, (laughs) i'm on tiktok i'm on it as well i actually it's funny because i i started throwing up travel videos because i didn't do the research and i had no idea what worked yeah and then i thought oh this could be my fun platform where i can be a goofball and yeah 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 so i haven't started that yet but i think uh, you're doing all of those like yeah, your comedy videos all need to be on there <laughs> for sure. So, well, and it's funny because I am the everybody was like, Oh, you dance in front of walls, you need to be on TikTok. And I'm like, Simmer down, guys. Okay, first of all, I'm not sitting here doing a coordinated button dance or I'm like, <laughs> like, like mm. I'm good. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and spend 30 minutes to learn a 30 second dance. I mean, I could, but, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I was just like, no, I would just rather put on some like really cheesy song and just be like doing whatever I do. Um, so, but I do need to get on it and play on it more. I have to say, I know, I know. And I, I'm, my mind is blown by the number of people that I, I have that are in my close circle of friends that have blown up their platform on there. And I just like, I look at it and I'm like, I should be doing that. But it, it doesn't feel right for me right now. And I'm like, you know what? You're doing enough other things. Like, you, you, it's okay that you don't have to be everywhere at once. And that's another thing. That's another thing is that, that holds people back because they're like, oh my gosh, I have to worry about my Facebook page. And then I have to worry about an Instagram. And then there's Twitter. And then there's YouTube. And now there's TikTok. And then there's Pinterest. And so it's like, that is overwhelming, especially at the beginning. It's overwhelming even when you're in it, you know? So it's okay to kind of focus on one or two platforms to be the main ones that you really, you dive into and you really master. I think even Gary Vee talks about that. It's like, yeah. he goes through phases where he just is like all in, doubles down on whatever platform. I mean, he was originally big on Twitter. Now he's, then he did his other platforms. He even came back to Twitter and there's link, LinkedIn, by the way, is another one. So um, don't let it hold you back and just kind of like, you know, play with them, but also you don't need to, go crazy on every platform. I haven't done the TikTok thing. I'll eventually probably get on it, but it's like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I I can't do the coordinated videos either. I'd probably be like, I don't know. No, when we start road tripping, I'll make you do some with me. (laughs) So I'll just be like, oh my gosh, TikTok after TikTok. But actually speaking of social media, where can we find you specifically? Like, cause I know that you're probably like across the board. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm um, oh, pretty much across the board. So it's Ask a Concierge, so A-S-K-A Concierge, which is spelled C-O-N-C-I-E-R-G-E. So Ask a Concierge, <laughs> I spell it out because nobody can spell a concierge right, which is fine. That's okay. That's, That's me, a, I, I can't spell oh, concierge. And it's, <laughs> it, it, look, it's not a common word. Is it even arguably an English word? Whatever. We don't even need to get into the, the entomology of it, but um, so ask a concierge. I'm mainly pretty active on, on Instagram, but I also am um, on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube as well. If you're wanting to really just kind of do a deeper dive into videos. And I mean, those are kind of, oh, and then LinkedIn. So if you're wanting to connect in like just more on like the business side of things, I share very business tailored, um, content on there. That's different. Or get on her stories and watch her dance. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> exactly. Watch and then me. Soon on TikTok, so then you'll be able to see her on that too. There you go. Is there anything <laughs> else that you want to share? 
<laughs> oh gosh. Um, what else could I share with you guys? I mean, my social security number. I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. Not going to. No, no, that. your pen, please. Oh. That'd be very <laughs> credit card would be. Helpful. You don't have to. Just to- <laughs> No, just no, wanted no. to give you the space in case. No, of I, no, I appreciate. I, I'm totally teasing, um, <laughs> but no, I would just say, look. If, I mean, if you guys are, you know, especially, um, reach out. I would just say, reach out. If you happen to stumble upon this, and if I said something that resonates with you, reach out. Send me a message. I do check all of my DMs, even um, if we aren't like connected as a friend. So it might not be right away, but I do make a point to check on, in on them. So reach out if you have a question or just want to connect, because happy to do that. Um, so that, that would be really my only additional thing to add. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sarah, so much for joining the show. Like, really, thank you for being on here. You gave such good <laughs> insight and content. Um, I am going to say with Stumbling Forward, don't forget to go on iTunes and give us five stars. We're also on Spotify. And if you want a little of something extra, this video is going to be on YouTube. So check it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you. And my name. Dear- <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I'll edit that. <laughs> my name is Kristen Herman. And I'm Monica Ortega. <laughs> Thank you, guys.